people started thinking that Muslims are violent. And the message of Islam is to kill people. The true picture and the true teachings of Islam are to aspirate the peace around the world. It was the moment the world changed forever and it was witnessed by millions live on television. Four coordinated suicide attacks by Al-Qaeda led to the deaths of almost 3,000 people. The shockwaves were felt across the globe. We were devastated. We knew that we'd become targets of all kinds of attacks, especially after Salman rushed in in 1989. This was going to cause terrible problems for our community. And indeed it has, in the last 10 years, the life of Muslims in Britain has changed for the worse because they're under scrutiny, they're under attack, and they're pilloried from pillar to post. Muslims everywhere came under attack. So too did Sikhs and Hindus who were mistaken for Muslims and temples and mosques were firebombed. Islamophobia was on the rise. Uh, we had reports of individuals that were being dis discriminated. We had draconian laws set up by our government in relation to the Counter-Terrorism Act, which was never in place even at the time of the 1980s when Margaret Thatcher's government uh, received an attack from the IRA. But all of a sudden the world had changed. The profiling of Muslims had taken place at ports of entry as you leave the country, enter the country. And we had some terrible, terrible stories about individuals struggling and suffering. I was working in schools at the time and I remember actually parents um, who were wearing a hijab um, come with to, to drop their children off without the hijab and that, that was fear, you know, fear within the Muslim community about what the reprisal would be um, and certainly, you know, walking through um, town etc, you, you, you could feel, a, you know, there was a difference, there was a um, bit of a tension in the air and, and people did, did look. Luman Ali was a 16 year old student in September 2011. Immediately he noticed a sea change in attitudes to Muslims. One of the main things that happened was people were more curious about my religion and asking questions because they was, they, the, the media was trying to link Islam with terrorism and because people that I knew had experienced uh, my peaceful way of life they, were, they tried to say how did this come about so I had a lot more questions about my religion. After 9-11, President George Bush launched Operation Enduring Freedom and invaded Afghanistan to try to dismantle the Al-Qaeda terrorist network. This will change the world forever and for the worst. That's what I said 10 years ago. And what you see now is even worse than I could ever imagine because then you had the Americans launching a war against terror and terrorism. 10 years down the line, that war has proliferated so enormously, resulting in the killing of over a million civilians, and we don't know where it's going. The damage caused by the attacks on New York and the Pentagon ran into billions of pounds. That damage has been repaired, but what has been repaired is the damage done to Islam itself. One way forward, I think, is to create a better understanding and education and awareness program and this is a part on both sides. The community out there, the wider community, i.e. the non-Muslim community, need to open up their hearts and their minds to the Muslim community. And likewise, the Muslim community have to better market themselves. There's a certain fear that they have of the Muslim community. And I think it's a duty also of Muslims equally to go out there and say, this is not what we are about. We are peace-loving people and they need to promote themselves. So there needs to be an adverse marketing policy on both sides to try and make people understand what this whole thing is about. Like 1066 and 1914 and 1939, 9-11 has become a date which will resonate through history for centuries to come. I think if there is goodwill on the part of both sides, the Western powers and the Muslim leadership, they can begin to weave a political structure where they can begin to de-escalate this terrorism through good foreign policies instead of keeping on attacking them, killing them. Look at Pakistan. Pakistan's become a basket case because of this war on terror. 
and look at many other Muslim countries. I look at our own country here in Britain. We live in fear of being attacked by terrorists. The war on terror has still not been won and we'll have to wait for at least another decade to judge if the effects of 9-11 have finally started to recede. This is Barrett Patel for Pukar News in Leicester.